Hey, welcome to the first video of my new channel, Evnos Linux, where everything is about Linux and produced on Linux. And in this first video, I had this grand scheme of doing this master video of everything from downloading the ISO and installing the operating system to getting it completely set up and all the software installed ended up being way too long. So I've broken this into two videos. This first video is just the installation of the operating system and getting it set up visually the way I want, doing updates and stuff like that. The second video is gonna be installing the software that I need to do my video production. Now, even with breaking it up, this video is still a little long. So down in the description, I'll have kind of a timeline if you wanna jump right to any of the segments that I talk about in this video. But with all that out of the way, let's jump into the computer and get started. So here we are on the desktop and this is Ubuntu Mate and this is what we're going to be recreating in this video today. This is going to be my primary production machine and I'm going to walk through the setup of everything that I need to create the videos for this channel and it's all going to be done on Linux. So let's jump right into it. And the first thing we need to do is download the installer for the uh, Ubuntu Mate. It's an ISO file that gets burned to a USB drive. So I just went out to ubuntumate.org to the download area and everything that I talk about in this video, I'll have links down in the description. So I already downloaded that ISO file. And then if you look online, you're gonna see a lot of information about how to burn that ISO file to a thumb drive. The easiest thing to do is use a program called Etcher. Don't do the net booting and all that other crazy stuff you're gonna be seeing. Just go out to, um, etcher.io, it'll forward you to this site. And again, I'll have the link down in the description. Just download this, it's a Linux app image. It's also available on Windows and Mac OS. And all you do is you go in and extract it. And then just run it like any other application. So when this launches, it's gonna ask for the image file. So that's gonna be our Ubuntu Mate ISO. We're gonna open that up. It automatically picked my USB drive that I put in. That is this one right over here. And then I'm gonna flash it. Put in my password. Now this takes a few minutes to run through the flash, so I'm gonna skip past this part and just come back when it's done. So there we are, it's all flashed to the drive and the only thing left now is to reboot and boot into the live environment. So there's two options from this menu. You can install it right away or you can try it without installing it. Uh, doing that, it's gonna boot into a uh, kind of a live environment for the operating system and that'll let you try it out on your hardware to make sure things are gonna work before you jump in and do the full install. I already know things are gonna work on here but I'll just go in here to, to show you how to activate the install from within the live environment. Takes just a second. All right, so here we are in Ubuntu Mate, and this is running off that thumb drive. So you can go in and you know browse the web, make sure everything's working, and then when you're ready, go into install Ubuntu Mate. Now here's some options. You can install a minimal installation of Ubuntu, and what that is is just kind of a bare bones installation, doesn't have a lot of software. And that's really nice because it lets you install your own software and just build up the system the way you want. What I recommend for uh, especially people that are starting out is do the normal install that basically installs everything you want. And then also hit this install third party software and graphics, blah, 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 blah. That'll get all the uh, third party software and drivers for your hardware if it detects anything. Also, I recommend keeping the download updates while installing checked because that'll get all the latest updates. On this one, it lets you, um, if you have another operating system, it'll let you install right alongside it most of the time. In this case, I'm just gonna erase the entire disk and use the whole thing for Ubuntu Mate. So here you're gonna select your region so it can get your, your time and date right. Once you do that, it's gonna ask you for your username and password. And then now it's just gonna go through the rest of the install. It's gonna do the uh, installation on the system and download any of those drivers or anything that it detects. And uh, then when that's all done, I'll come back again and we'll boot into the OS for the first time. Okay, so the install is all done. So we can go ahead and restart. It's gonna tell us to take out the thumb drive in just a second here. Yep. 
And there we go. We are in the Ubuntu Mate default desktop. Uh, everything is installed. We have a web browser. We have all the tools we need for basic computing. But for the production stuff, there's a few things I want to do. Number one is I want to change the theme because I can't stand the theme that comes with this. So I'm going to go out to the terminal. And you can get there just by holding Control-Alt-T. And I am going to install a uh, theme called Arc. So I'm going to use sudo apt install and then arc-theme. And while that's doing that, I am also going to go out and get an icon set called Papyrus. I get, usually get it from the GitHub because that's the most recent version and it'll give you instructions for Ubuntu on how to add this repository. So be really careful uh, when you're installing things and copying commands from a website because it's really easy for people to put malicious stuff in there that you just blindly copy and paste. Um, so always make sure that you know some, what something's doing before you post paste it into your terminal because you could uh, do some damage to your system if you run some malicious uh, commands. Okay, so now we have to apply that theme. So if we go into appearances, and I like this arc dark, and then what I'm gonna do is go in and customize it, go to icons, and then I'm gonna choose the papyrus dark. So I like that theme a lot better. Um, and then I wanna get rid of this desktop background. Just right click, go to desktop background, and this just this default one is fine. Okay, uh, I can breathe a little easier. That, that green kind of stresses me out. <laughs> so there is kind of the visual thing. The next thing that I like to do is I like to have kind of a, a Mac OS feel. Um, there's two things that you can do to achieve that. One is there's a um, global menu that kind of takes these options in the windows, like file, edit, view, search, blah, 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 and puts it up in one of your panels. I usually put it in the top panel. Um, it just kind of unifies that. I like that feel a little bit better. And I'm also going to install Docky. Uh, Mate, Ubuntu Mate comes with Plank, which is a dock. I prefer Docky. I don't really have a reason. Um, there's nothing concrete. I just prefer it. So I'm going to go out to, actually, I'm just going to do it from the command line here. Now there's a few ways to install applications in Ubuntu. There's through the command line. Ubuntu Mate comes with something called Software Boutique, which I really do not like Software Boutique. It's, it's good for brand new users. It helps you easily find software, but it's extremely limited. So um, there's also the Ubuntu Software Center and Synaptic. So I'm gonna install the Ubuntu software, uh, which is based off GNOME software. So I'll just show you the software boutique here. So it's a good layout and uh, it helps you easily find software, but it, you don't have access to everything in here. Um, and I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So I am going to go and find the software application, install that. Okay, that's installed. And I'm also going to install Synaptic, but I'm going to do that from the command line. Now, Synaptic is not as pretty as the software or software boutique, but you have access to everything in a graphical format uh, if you don't want to use the command prompt. Or for me, I always forget what things are called. So I use Synaptic to uh, do a search so I can find the thing I want to install without having to remember the exact name of what the package is. For instance, with Docky, if we go to if we launch Docky here, and because we have this dock, I'm going to get rid of this panel. So we have Docky, but it puts a stupid little uh, anchor icon, and the only way to get rid of that, you can't go into the settings of Docky and get rid of it or anything. You have to load something called gconf editor, and I can never remember the exact package name. So I'm going to mark that for installation, apply it. Okay. 
Okay, and then that should be in here. Configuration editor. So I want to get rid of that uh, anchor icon. So I'm going to go into apps, docky, docky items, docky item, and then uncheck show docky item. And then that gets rid of that. All right, now before I do anything else, one thing I forgot to do is install the updates. So after you do a fresh install, it's gonna go out and look for updates. So I want to go ahead and install that. Uh, the software updater found a bunch of things. So I'm gonna install all of those and just get my system up to date. And then after it's installed, I'm gonna reboot and come back and install the rest of the stuff. Okay, so that updates are installed, but I just realized something before I restart, what I want to do is I also want to add that uh, global menu that I mentioned, and that's real easy to do. You can just go to add the panel, look for global, global application menu, and there it is. It's added, and then we can just move that over to the end. Um, I'm going to get rid of Firefox here. Move that. Okay, now the reason why I'm doing that now is because that works much better with a reboot. And since I just installed those updates, I'm going to be rebooting anyway. So I'm going to restart. And then uh, when I come back, we'll install the rest of the software. All right, so we're back up and Docky is not running. And that was my fault. So what I forgot to do is I forgot to add it to the startup applications. So if you want anything to start when you log into your desktop, you can just add it to the startup application. So we'll just do the name of Docky. The command to launch it is Docky. So next time we start up, it'll automatically launch that, but I'll just go and manually launch it for now. Okay, so visually I got everything set up. This is kind of how I want it to look. Now I need to install the software. All right, now I know that was kind of an abrupt ending, but like I said, it was getting a little too long, so I broke it up. So please make sure you subscribe so you can uh, get notified when I post part two that goes over the applications that I'm gonna install for the production of this channel. And also check out my other main channel, even else I'll put a link down in the description where I do product reviews and tutorials. And come see me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and say hello. I'll see you next time.